Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Professor Abdus Salam Yasin Taha from the College of Medicine, University of Sulaimani, giving a talk on axillofemoral bypass for critically ischemic lone lower limb. You can watch this lecture and other lectures by visiting my YouTube channel using the URL at the bottom of the slide. Well, the uh, current presentation is based on a previous publication uh, at the Journal of Cardiovascular Diseases and Diagnosis at uh, 2016. It was a case report entitled Axillofemoral Bypass for Critically Ischemic Clone Lower Limb, a Mercy Trial in a Final Exam or a simple remedy for an impending disaster. Critical limb ischemia with rest pain and or tissue loss is a serious sequelae of occlusive autoiliac disease, inevitably leading to amputation unless a timely successful revascularization is performed. The most effective therapy is our to bifemoral bypass, while endovascular intervention has an increasing role in lesions of favorable anatomy. However, there's a group of poorest patients with comorbidities who neither tolerate a major aortic surgery nor being suitable for endovascular therapy. For such patients, extra anatomical bypass, such as axillofemoral bypass, first used in 1963, emerges as an effective alternative. The case. Herein, we describe the case of an Iraqi male, 65 years old, with a critically ischemic lone lower limb, due to total occlusion of infrarenal aorta with a very poor distal runoff, who underwent a successful axillofemoral bypass that relieved his pain and saved his single lower limb. The graft was patent five months following the, the operation, as shown by Doppler ultrasonography, though longer follow-up was not available. History and examination. A man of 65 was admitted to Suleimania Teaching Hospital, Suleimania, Iraq, on the 1st of November, 2009, because of severe rest pain in his left foot of six months duration. He was a known case of peripheral arterial disease for three years and had right above knee amputation two years earlier due to advanced ischemia. He used to smoke heavily for many years. Physical examination revealed impalpable bilateral femoral pulses. Diagnostic workup, blood tests revealed a normal lipid profile, but high blood sugar that required insulin therapy for control. Chest radiograph and ECG were normal. Keller Doppler ultrasonography and transradial orthography revealed total occlusion of the abdominal aorta just below the renal arteries with very poor distal runoff. So the uh, abdominal aortogram revealed total occlusion of the abdominal aorta just below the renal arteries as seen in this picture with very uh, poor distal runoff. The following movies will show the abdominal aortogram of this patient. So 
So there is no flow below the level of the renal arteries. This picture is more clear. You can see abundant collaterals indicating chronicity of the lesion. And there is a very faint flow in the femoral artery. In this uh, uh, view, we can see the right above knee amputation and very poor distal runoff and the abundant collaterals. Here, there's a very faint flow in the left superficial femoral artery. The left femoral artery is either obstructed or under uh, perfused. The planned surgical intervention. As a limb-saving procedure, the patient accepted exploration of the left femoral artery for possible revascularization. We planned to use a technique of low morbidity, avoiding a major surgery in this patient. In a preparation for axillo femoral bypass, we did color Doppler ultrasonography of the left brachial artery and a normal triphasic blood flow was seen. The procedure under general anesthesia and in supine position with abduction of the left upper limb, a short vertical left groin incision was performed. The left superficial femoral artery was isolated. It was thick walled, but has a patent lumen. Arteriotomy revealed weak flow. Local thrombo and arterectomy was done in a preparation for distal anastomosis. Axillary artery exposure. A short incision was made below the middle third of the left clavicle. Incision of clavi pectoral fascia was performed. Pectoralis major muscle fibers were splitted. The axillary artery was isolated from the nearby axillary vein and brachial plexus. The acromioclavicular branch was ligated and divided. Pectoralis minor muscle was divided to improve exposure. So these pictures demonstrate the procedure of exposure of the axillary artery. The incision uh, is positioned below the middle third of the clavicle. The clavi pectoral fascia was incised. The acromioclavicular branch of the axillary artery was ligated and divided. The muscle fibers of pectoralis major were splitted, and then the artery was isolated. And in order to improve exposure, the pectoralis minor muscle at the lateral part of the wound was uh, divided. So this uh, operative photograph shows the isolation of the axillary artery by uh, sharp dissection. And in this uh, picture also, we, you can see that the first part of the axillary artery has been isolated and encircled. 
And in this picture, we can see that the pectoralis uh, minor muscle has been divided to improve uh, exposure. The proximal anastomosis, a uh, six millimeter PTFE graft was anastomosed proximally and to side to the axillary artery using continuous 5 or polypropylene suture. A good pulsatile flow was obtained in the graft. Minor bleeding from the suture line was controlled by pressure. So these are the steps of the proximal anastomosis. The parachuting technique was used. The graft is held at a distance from the uh, artery and proline suture was used. Multiple uh, bites were introduced uh, before uh, sliding the graft uh, down to the or near the uh, opening in the artery. And here uh, you can see that the uh, end to side graft to artery anastomosis has been completed and hemostasis uh, was secured and the bed flow was good in the graft. The next step was the subcutaneous tunneling of the graft. A subcutaneous tunnel was made using a long artery forceps along the lateral chest and abdominal wall in mid axillary line. Three stop incisions were made to recover the graft. The 40 centimeter graft was not enough to reach the groin. Therefore, additional piece of similar graft was sutured to the initial graft using a continuous 6 or polypropylene suture. So in this picture, we can see how the graft was tunneled subcutaneously. Distal anastomosis and closure. The distal anastomosis was made to the superficial femoral artery and to side using a 6O polypropylene suture. There was a palpable pulse in the superficial femoral artery distal to the anastomosis. After checking the hemostasis, radivac drains were placed in the upper and lower wounds, and all wounds were, were closed in layers. The post-operative course was uneventful. The graft was patent 45 days post-operatively. So in this picture, we can see the distal anastomosis has been completed. The graft uh, to the side of the artery, And here the procedure has been nearly finished. The graft is placed subcutaneously uh, from the uh, uh, axillary artery down to the femoral artery in the groin. And this picture shows how the graft was patent 45 days postoperatively uh, by uh, ultrasonography, the uh, normal triphasic uh, flow pattern is evident in the graft. And also a normal flow in the common femoral artery was uh, demonstrated by uh, this uh, ultrasonogram. The discussion, critical chronic lower limb ischemia is a serious manifestation of atherosclerotic autoiliac disease, which needs an aggressive therapy to avoid limb loss. The revascularization of ischemic lower limb or limbs is best achieved via auto 
bifemoral bypass performed through a transperitoneal or retroperitoneal approach, as this operation gives higher survival rates, better graft patency, and associated with lower hospital mortality. Endovascular intervention is an attractive method, which is increasingly employed nowadays to treat critical lower limb ischemia associated with lesions of favorable anatomy. Extra anatomical bypass. Our reconstruction is a major undertaking with many potential complications and therefore, the poorest patients may not tolerate it. The alternative choice is the extra anatomical bypass in which a blood flow to lower limb arteries is restored using synthetic grafts and astomos to arteries outside the abdomen, such as the ipsilateral or contralateral axillary artery or the contralateral femoral artery. Extra anatomical bypass is a less invasive procedure which can save threatened limbs in patients deemed to be high risk for aortic surgery. Moreover, it has a place in the management of infected aortic grafts and aortoduodenal fistulae. Apart from severe rest pain, the reported patient was in danger of losing his lone lower limb due to severe ischemia. Impalpable femoral pulse and poor distal runoff was a main obstacle to any sort of revascularization. Searching for a solution for this problem, we elected to explore the femoral artery first to know whether it is graftable or not. Non-opacified artery on arteriography doesn't necessarily imply an occlusion, but it could be the result of underperfusion. Although superficial femoral artery was thick-walled with feeble blood flow, removal of the atheroma by thrombo and arterectomy provided the patient a good site for distal anastomosis. The inflow vessel could be either the abdominal aorta proximal to the obstruction or an extra anatomical site, such as the contralateral femoral artery or the unilateral axillary artery. To perform our to femoral bypass graft, we ought to access the abdominal aorta through a transperitoneal or a retroperitoneal approach. Both represent a major surgical intervention. In contrast, an extra anatomical bypass would avoid such a major operation and its potential morbidity. Femoral, femoral crossover graft was not feasible as the right femoral pulse was impalpable. However, the ipsilateral axillary artery was a good option as clinical assessment and color Doppler ultrasonography proved its patency. The operation is characterized by its relative simplicity as both axillary and femoral arteries are easy to explore even under local anesthesia. Although axillofemoral bypass is usually performed under general anesthesia, there are few reports describing the use of local anesthesia. Fortunately, the patient was relieved from rest pain and his single lower limb could be saved by this operation. The graft was patent five months following the operation as shown by Doppler ultrasonography, though longer follow-up was not available. 
graft patency. The five-year primary patency rate of axillofemoral bypass varies widely from 57 to 74%, which is relatively lower than that of our to femoral bypass, which is about 70 to 89%. However, this is an accepted reasonable result as the patients who receive axillofemoral bypass usually have a reduced life expectancy due to the associated comorbidities. The mortality. Corbett et al. reported no operative mortality from axillofemoral grafting. The relatively higher hospital mortality of axillofemoral bypass compared to aortofemoral bypass reported by some authors is due to the associated comorbidities rather than the operation itself. Indications. Currently, axillofemoral bypass is used for aortoiliac disease in high-risk patients with a very short life expectancy, less than five years, and when endovascular therapy is not possible. Furthermore, it has a definite role in the management of infected aortic grafts and aortoduodenal fistulae. In conclusion, axillofemoral bypass is relatively a simple operation for a serious disease. Limb loss was inevitable in this patient without this MERSI trial. The alternative choice was either amputation or a major aortic surgery with a doubtful benefit and a definite morbidity. And this is the list of bibliography used in the preparation of this uh, case report and presentation. And with this beautiful picture of Baghdad, Iraq, we conclude our lecture. I would like to thank you for watching and listening to the lecture. This is Professor Abdesalam Yasin Taha signing off from the College of Medicine, University of Suleimani.